and, uh, and they still do. So when this operation gets to the point where it not only, wh where it sues the very people that it's supposed to defend, then you begin to think that there ought to be some thinking about just where it goes and what the parameters of this office are. And it was only last year that I started delving into this, the real meat of this thing. And I was absolutely surprised to find that there's nothing, nothing in Michigan's Constitution that gives any duties whatsoever to the Attorney General. It's the only office so negated. And, and, but it, it, um, it, it relies on the common law and the statutes that are there and all that stuff, and, and there are lots of that. And, uh, but there's nothing in the Constitution. And so I suggested, what was this, the, the legislature very um, clumsily tried to do something about it, and they just got their, uh, they, they were very rightfully embarrassed because they didn't use the right procedure. They should have sat down with the Attorney General and various other people involved and in an orderly manner began to, begin to discuss this whole business, and they didn't. And I said to myself, well, this ought to be something that uh, the, um, uh, the Law Revision Commission ought to look at. Mm -hmm. So I called McClellan and I said, how do you get something on the agenda? And he said, well, any citizen can write a letter. Why don't you? And I said, okay, I will. And so that's where it stands now. And they're, they're, they haven't forgotten it. It'll, it'll come up again because it, Judge Griffin ask for opinions on this representing both sides and so forth. What have we left <coughs> out? What haven't we, what haven't we touched on? Well, uh, we've left out my impression of Bill Ryan, uh, who, who I was, is one of the most dedicated guys. He's one of the guys that I've got to say came into the legislature as a calling mm -hmm. and never forgot that it was a calling. Uh, he was almost uh, um, like a priest, and his and his uh, s he was self-depriving and all that sort of stuff. He was certainly a public servant. <coughs> he was a public servant. His his ideas of what government ought to be were almost the opposite of mine. He he wanted w g lots of government, and I wanted limited government, like Jefferson. And he he wanted a lot of government more than even Franklin Roosevelt. But but I but I can assume that it, when you disagreed, it was very civilly. Yeah, I was, but we 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 didn't hesitate to raise our voices to each other. One of the things that I got the biggest charge out of was that Romney thought didn't think he was going to have much much trouble negotiating with him on the income tax, but I, but I knew I knew he would, and that. Romney, you know, could shout pretty loudly, and uh, but he didn't think Bill Ryan w w was able to do that. But I knew Bill Ryan could take off his shoe and pound the table, and, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. And he found out in a big fat hurry that that Bill Ryan was no pushover. Uh, he he also, <laughs> uh, I think, enjoyed uh, taking his time on these kinds of things. <laughs> that is an understatement. He had that, that's what I've got written down here. He has the, has the most patience yes. of anybody, yes. but that's part of the UAW negotiating. Could not be yeah. hurried. And, and uh, so he, is, uh, he was schooled in the UAW negotiating. He used to write for the Catholic uh, newspaper, uh, Catholic labor newspaper. And uh, he's a very sincere guy. I visited him a few times lately out of the nursing home. And so he and I were brought up uh, breathing the w the breezes coming off Lake St. Clair, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> along with Zoltan Ferency and yep. Bill Ryan and Bob Walter. Now mm -hmm. that's a triumvirate. Yeah. But well, I, I knew Zoltan. But we were all 
We were all dedicated public servants, I, I, I think I should say. I, I believe that Zoltan probably inhaled more of Great Lake steel, though, and the, the Detroit River than, than Lake St. Clair. Well, he, he Com might have. Coming been. from Del Rey. Yeah, he, he, well, he, he grew up in, his political stuff was, uh, uh, he may have grown up over there by you, but he, he moved out to the 14th District. Okay. Because I know he was a, worked under Burt Donlan, who was a chairman of the 14th Congressional District Democrats, okay. and, and a guy I got to know pretty well. Right. And, well, I don't know whether that covers the waterfront, but that covers some of it. You uh, you uh, worked with uh, various labor leaders through the years and labor no, labor I, lobbyists. Uh, Gus Scholl. I didn't I didn't work with Gus Scholl very much. Uh, I knew who he was, but I didn't work with him. Uh, um, I can't say that I sat down and worked with him. Okay. I mean, the, the the labor leaders that I worked with mainly were the ones that were around the legislature. He wasn't around a lot, and if he was, he, he was pretty much with the Democrats. Okay. Um, I worked with the police and the fire and and. and, and the MEA, mm -hmm. and um, well, one of the things that I I introduced a bill very early on, believe it or not, that that would have allowed a teacher with a master's degree to teach the subject matter that they have a master's degree in in high school if they were certified by the superintendent that they could teach, and I almost got that through the legislature in the fifties. Now they're thinking about that now, or at least maybe they have it now, I'm not sure. But we couldn't get that through the House. Um, oh, the elimination of district courts. That was uh, elimination of JPs in the district courts. I think one of the, the things that I spent the most time on of any one apparently small issue now this is an example of what a speaker has to do every now and then. Was that we were do abolishing the JPs? That's a that's a big structure, and we had a conference committee. It was Don Holbrook and Danny Cooper, and I don't know whether it was Joe Swallow or somebody else on the, somebody on the judiciary committee, and they didn't get any place. So we had to have a second conference committee. And I wanted to get a bill on this thing, and I knew that 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 these guys were in districts where there was too much pressure, so that they wouldn't come up with a bill. And I spent a long time figuring out who to put on that deal. So I put, I took off. I could not keep Holbrook on it because he was chairman of the judiciary. So I put Jim Heinz who was a super lawyer from Kalamazoo, and Dick Young, who was a super lawyer from Dearborn Heights. And, uh, and I told those guys, we want, a, we want a bill. And I knew all Bedlam was going to break when, when this second study committee, second conference committee was announced. So instead of presiding, I went down to my seat. Um, Next to Bill Fitzgerald Sr., <laughs> ready to defend my position, which which I did, and there there was bedlam. It, uh, Danny <laughs> Cooper got up and raised hell, and uh, and so did some of the other people. But but we prevailed, and they prevailed. They did a wonderful job of getting a getting a bill through. You mentioned Joe Swallow, who's famous for the uh, proposal for the unicameral legislature. Yeah, well, he and, and I have debated that, and that doesn't work, as you know. Well, and, and as I watch Nebraska now, much closer than I ever yeah. did before, I agree with you completely. It yeah, is well, a nightmare. Well, so does Vince Brown. Yes. Uh, and and we, we, we know the uh, Secretary of the Senate. Yes, we do.